Hi, I'm Dr. David Ireland, the lead pastor of Christ Church. During this uncertain time that we are not able to gather together because of the global pandemic with the coronavirus, it's so important that we gather together virtually. In fact, every Sunday we offer online services. And if you visit our website at ChristChurchUSA.org, you'll see the service times. And this particular weekend, I have a very fresh, powerful, relevant message for you and your family to give you hope in these trying times. This experience tonight, we're calling it the 2020 experience. That means 20 minutes of Bible study on Wednesdays at 715, and then 20 minutes of prayer time on Fridays at 715. And so I want you to join us. In fact, tag your friends right now. Send them this link because your family and friends also want hope. And the Bible is chock full of hope to ground us during times of uncertainty when we feel powerless. Get ready, I'm gonna go into the Word, but remember, on Monday evenings at 7.15, we also offer a virtual experience for your teenagers and your children. So if you visit our website, you'll gain more information about those particular things. Let's bow our hearts together as I get ready to teach you the Bible. Father, I just pray that you would join us, minister to each person in a unique way, reach people that never thought in a million years they'd be able to watch or listen to a Bible study. But may you, may you give them hope during these uncertain times. In Christ's name, amen. My Bible is open to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Paul was a spiritual dad to Timothy, his son. At a very turbulent time in Timothy's life, he felt that something's missing. Paul pinpointed what was missing. And verse 7, as I read from the Amplified Version of the Bible, says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or cowardice or fear, but He has given us a spirit of power and of love and of sound judgment and personal discipline, abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. Fear had gotten the best of Timothy to such a point that he was not able to function. He couldn't thrive. He couldn't flourish. And that may have happened to you. And it's so easy because the media is giving us all of this information about, about coronavirus, and rightly so. But if we listen to the media constantly, you'll find as if it were just your heart becoming closed in and gripped by fear. Now, to be honest and academically truthful, there are different types of fear. You have crippling fear. That's the fear of, of the fear of certain things, such as acrophobia, the fear of heights, or claustrophobia, the fear of enclosed spaces. Those are real types of fears that people grapple with. That's not what I'm talking about. Then you have contagious fear, the kind of fear that spreads from one person to another because they lack hope or they lack perspective. And when you think about that, that kind of fear if it gets a hold of you, it'll impact your children, it'll impact your spouse, it'll impact your family members, your coworkers. 
those in your network, your sphere of influence, it can really shut down their openness to hope. That we need to fight against. So I want to bring you now to this. There's a practical fear, though, a sobering fear. I get it. Anyone can contract the COVID-19 virus. It's sobering. It's real. But how do we deal with it in terms of not spreading contagious fear? And so I want to give you some sense making and sense meaning because that's the job of a leader. That leader is to give us context for meaning. That leader gives context for action. Sense making is about having compassion when we need it. And so there are three anchor points I see Paul providing to Timothy as Paul is trying to make, help Timothy make sense of his life and of his world. First, when you deal with combating fear or overcoming fear is awareness. God is aware of our plight and circumstances. He knows that we in our nation and in fact around the world are facing this global pandem pandemic. The Holy Spirit does not work cowardice into people though. He cannot. He does not. He will not. But an awareness says that God knows where I am. He knows what I'm going through. He knows my need. He knows what I'm grappling with. And so I should not divorce myself from the omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, you know, ever-present God whenever I go through something difficult. So Paul brings that perspective, that awareness to Timothy by saying, Timothy, God has not given you the spirit of fear. In other words, fear that you're dealing with didn't come from God. So I want you now to be anchored in this reality that that is not how God works. So that means the fear that you're feeling should not grip your heart because it doesn't come from God. And anything that doesn't come from God, you don't want to embrace and hold on to. So I want to encourage you right now, wherever you are and whatever you're going through, fear is very much real, but don't allow this contagious fear to grip your heart. Practical fear, yes, and alertness, yes, but not this contagious fear where you feel overwhelmed. Don't let that happen. So let this all-knowing God give you an awareness that this doesn't come from God. The second thing that Paul conveyed to Timothy in this passage, let me read the New International Version of 2 Timothy 1 verse 7. The Apostle Paul says, For the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. What I hear from that text is this. A second anchor point in how to overcome fear is ability. We have the ability to marshal courage. The Holy Spirit does not work cowardice, cowardice in His people. Rather, He evokes, He awakens this sense of courage in us that we can be able to say, wait a second, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so this ability that Paul is speaking of to Timothy is saying, Timothy, God gives you the ability, He gives you this power to be able to overcome your fear and to rise above it. And so I want you to search your heart because inside of you there's the ability to overcome this crippling cowardice, this cowering kind of fear that spreads. So you need to rise up and say, this through, this too shall pass. I can get through this. You know, I remember it was during 9-11 at our Montclair, New Jersey campus when that horrific thing occurred at, and Montclair is a bedroom community to New York City. So from some of the mountainous areas of Montclair, you can actually see the Twin Towers ablaze. We were getting phone calls even from atheists. Yes, atheists calling our church. And they would say, look, I, I don't believe in God or anything, but can I come to Sunday service? And we said, certainly you can come. And what that communicated was even atheists are looking for hope. And they couldn't find hope in their atheistic view. They couldn't find hope because as an atheist, there's no, what do you hope in? They needed something else, someone else, someone outside of their worldview that can give them hope. And the gospel and the God that we serve is a God of hope. He gives hope. And so Paul is telling Timothy, Timothy, you have the ability to overcome fear. You have the ability to rise above it. And I want to convey to you that particular anchor point. Three anchor points to overcoming fear. Anchor point number one, awareness 
God is a very present help in time of trouble. God's not vacated us. Second, ability. We have the ability to marshal courage. Third, awaken. There are emotions in us that have yet to be awakened. It's almost like when you hear about a little child being hit by a car and the mom rushes out and summons this strength and picks up the car that is, you know, picks up the tire over the, you know, that's ran over the girl's leg, the little girl's leg, and, and pushes away. Where did this mom get this superhuman strength? It was always there. It was awakened during crisis. I'm asking you to summon or awaken a strength within you during this coronavirus crisis. Rather than you being, be, being in this place of a stupor or being somehow you know, numb, let this crisis awaken a new dimension of who you are so that you can be able to come to your potential. One of the church fathers, his name was Tertullian, lived in the first century. During the height when Christians were being thrown to wild animals and beasts in the Colosseum as sport, Tertullian made this insightful statement. The blood of the martyrs is the seed, S-E-E-D, of the church. The more we're mowed down, the more we grow. I'm challenging every Christ follower to use this crisis, and I know it's not equivalent. I'm not making an equal parallel between coronavirus and the, the, the persecution of the Christian church. What I'm saying, though, is there's a common principle that we need to use. And the principle is this. In crisis, awaken strength. In crisis, grow. In crisis, become bigger. In crisis, become stronger. In other words, don't let crisis make you weaker. Don't let crisis still and remove your voice. In crisis, become prophetic. In crisis, become powerful. And if you would then be able to say, God, use this coronavirus to cause me to grow stronger spiritually and become an influencer to those in my family, to those in my school, to those in my community, to those on my job, God, help me to be able to have something to say and some hope to offer others. And when you do that, you're going to find people automatically looking to you as an influencer. Why? Because the world at this time needs hope. And one of the best ways you can provide hope is be strong. And let your strength not just be an individualistic strength or an isolated strength. Let your strength be a communal strength, a community strength. Let people lean on you during this crisis and watch what will happen. And may I suggest this is exactly what Jesus calls us to do. He says, let your light so shine that men may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. I wonder if you have watch, watched me and you've been watching me and you're not sure as to where you stand in eternal things. If you died right now, you don't know where you'd spend eternity. Why guess? Why be uncertain? Why be unsure? In order for you to be able to know with assuredness, with this sense of assurity, that you're going to spend eternity in heaven and with God, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can get to the Father but by me. May I have the awesome privilege of leading you into a relationship with Jesus Christ? You may ask, how do you do that? It's you inviting Jesus into your heart. So pray with me this simple prayer right where you are. Heavenly Father, I need you. I don't want to be unsure. I need to know totally sure that you are my Lord. So come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Wash away my sins. Change me. I ask you this in Christ's name. Amen. Congratulations. If you just prayed that prayer with me, I want you to click on the tab that's titled Next. We have pastors standing by to be able to not only make sure that we send you some follow-up information by way of online to make it easy so you can grow and understand this relationship in Jesus, but also if you have a prayer request, we want to be able to answer you and pray with you and pray for you. So communicate that. This is a great opportunity, and I thank you so much for tuning in. 
And remember, tune in this Sunday as we have our online services at various times and we're going to give you a very relevant word that's going to impact your life. I also want to give you an opportunity to give. So would you then follow the prompting on the screen so you can give your gift because this is how we grow in our relationship with God by being generous in our giving. God bless you. I look forward to our next 2020 experience and also our online service this Sunday. So oh.